All right, well, Thomas Barr, Executive Director of Local First Arizona, thank you again for being with us. Absolutely, thanks for having me. We're excited because uh, part of this pillar, we're gonna talk about activating the community. And while I know about Local First Arizona, will you let everyone else know a little bit about the cause in Local First Arizona? Sure, so Local First Arizona has been an organization for almost 18 years. Uh, we were founded in 2003 by Kimber Lanning, a small business owner herself, and really uh, the origination of it was to build a network of local businesses so that people knew who they were and uh, could, could spend their money with them. Um, but over the last 18 years, we've evolved a lot. And today, in, in addition to being the largest local business coalition in the country, um, we've got over 3,000 small businesses we provide resources for. Um, we're really working really hard to help um, move the needle on building equity in Arizona from, from every, uh, every lens um, and trying to build opportunities for different communities who might not have the opportunity to participate in a local economy, might not have the resources to start a business, uh, might need additional resources um, to shop local or eat local. So we have a wide variety of programs that, that help accomplish those things. Well, you, you tell the story very well, but something tells me you, you didn't go to college and say, I'm going to run this local First Arizona Absolutely and this not. is going to be my passion project. <laughs> but in doing that, talk to me about like, who are you and, and how did you come to Local First? Yep. Um, Arizona native. Um, usually there's a third of us in the room. So uh oh, there's, uh, there's 100% yeah. right now. So first time ever. Yeah. Um, uh, West Valley, uh, West kid. side, hey, West side. there we go too. <laughs> um, 55th. Went, <laughs> hey guys. 47. So. Okay. <laughs> um, went to high school, downtown Phoenix, moved to the East Valley, uh, to go to school, stayed out there, love Tempe. Um, and really my passion growing up has always been my home. Um, and I matched that with, uh, a passion for, um, building opportunity for other people that I got after experiencing my own family go through the Great Recession and realizing, you know, for someone as myself who I feel I grew up privileged to go through a difficult time, I started thinking about, you know, why did this happen and, and where is our money being placed and, and power and, and all those things. And I found Local First and realized that this is a solution. You know, this is a solution to invest in entrepreneurs and companies to grow and thrive in the place that I love is the work I want to be doing. And so it's been seven and a half years. Uh, again, we're the largest business coalition representing local businesses in the country and doing incredible work, um, not only representing that many businesses, uh, but just introducing really creative and innovative programs that don't, have never existed before uh, to help uh, build a stronger place that mm -hmm. we live in. All right. So you talk about this large coalition. A lot of people think of it as like a chamber of commerce, but you know, being here and knowing a little bit about Local First, that idea is, is not correct, right? Well, yeah. I mean, we offer resources to businesses, which is something that chambers have done for a long time. And I mean, we're, we're friends with all the chambers. We partner with them, um, would not be doing what we're doing without them. But what we're really trying to do is change the conversation and evolve the conversation around what happens to your money when you spend it. And how does the economy really work? And so we're really trying to get into changing the habits of, of people uh, to realize that the more they're intentional about where they spend their money, uh, the greater impact that it has uh, in the local community. Uh, when you go to um, a local business to spend you know, money on a coffee, uh, you might not think that you know, 4 or $5 is making a big impact. Um, but when you think about all the other businesses that that business does business with in your community, it's substantial. They're hiring, you know, local printers, they're hiring local web developers, local graphic designers, people you never see usually. Uh, but when you go to that national company and you spend money with them, uh, that money's going to corporate, right? It's, it's going somewhere else um, that far away and, and it doesn't stay in our community. So uh, the other thing that happens is, is you feel more connected to your home. Uh, you get to know a business owner. Uh, you get to uh, feel like you have pride in the place that you live. And so uh, the, the bigger picture aspect of what we're trying to do is to change how people really feel and think about how the economy works. You know, one of the things that I'd like to thank you for and the people at Local First is talking to me about my money. And when you talk about State 48, we're very proud about being local, 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 but we're not just Phoenix 48 or Gilbert 48, we're, we're State 48, we're the entire state, Flagstaff to Tombstone to Page all throughout. And one of the things you forget is those small businesses in those outer skirts. 
And the banks that are lending to those small businesses are most likely local as well. Yeah. So one of the campaigns you guys ran this year was moving your money. Yep. I am as most of the time as local as it comes. I love a local coffee shop. I love a local bookstore. I love a local restaurant for date night. I love all those things. The one thing I didn't know is I've been with a large bank since I was 16 years old mm -hmm. and I had to learn how to move my money. Talk about that campaign and how powerful that is for our community. Yeah, so usually how it happens is when you get excited about uh, shopping local or spending your money locally, it happens kind of how you describe. You think of the better experience you get from going to a local coffee shop. You think Shout about- the cartel. <laughs> you think about the better food and experience you Shout get- Shout out to Chris Bianco. From going to Bianco's or- What else we got? <laughs> any other local restaurant, right? And so those are, those are kind of the first steps. Then you start to realize- well, what else am I doing or could I do that could have a positive impact in my community? Um, so Move Your Money is a campaign we've been running uh, for about seven years. This year was our biggest ever uh, because uh, there's a lot of things happening in our country right now that cause us to think about what happens when I deposit my money, not just spend it, right? Shout out to 1AZ. 1AZ Credit My people, <laughs> they got me set up. <laughs> so when you put your dollars in a local bank or credit union like a 1AZ, uh, those decision makers are here. Um, and what they're more likely to do is turn around and take that money and lend it to small businesses. Uh, and that's because they're on the ground. They'll get to know the business owners. They'll get to know their family. They'll get to know their story. When you are a small business and you go to a big bank, uh, usually you're just filling out a form and it's being sent to somebody far away who doesn't get to know you and is making a, a decision about the future of your business. So the more money that we can put as people that live here in Arizona in local banks and credit unions, it's going to yield more small businesses that are going to be successful and grow and thrive, which makes a better Arizona, which makes a better place to live. It gives us those quirky fun businesses like Cartel and like Bianco that we can celebrate and visit um, because those dollars are staying right here in Arizona. So uh, we've pushed this campaign for seven years. We've actually uh, helped contribute to a 6.5% market shift in the number of dollars that stay in Arizona. So, That's awesome. Yeah, uh, in 2013, uh, about 97% of Arizonans were depositing their money into out-of-state banks. And today they're depositing about 91.5% out of state. So it's been a huge, huge shift. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. Well, you talk about activating the community and you talk about all these small businesses. We're in the middle of a pandemic and there are people being furloughed, let go. It reminds me of the Great Recession. How can Local First help people that say, you know what? I was let go. I love cutting hair. I'm going to start my own salon. You know what? I was let go. I was working in the back of the kitchen. I'm going to start my own restaurant. Mm -hmm. What kind of tools can you guys provide or what kind of encouragement or what opportunities are out there right now for people saying, you know what? I'm diving in, I'm gonna be a local first business too. Yeah, so every time there's a change in the market, um, there's new opportunities that arise. Uh, you know, every printing company that I have a relationship with, if you would have asked them a year ago if they were selling face masks and mm -hmm. plexiglass and signs on the floor that say stay six feet apart, <laughs> they would have been like, what are you talking about, right? And so we've seen a dramatic shift in the economy, a dramatic shift in almost every market, and with that comes new opportunity. So if you're interested, if you have the, the soul of an entrepreneur, um, there are new markets, there's new opportunities, there's new capabilities to launch businesses at all times. And so uh, part of what Local First does is we bring people together. Uh, we bring ideas together, resources together, people, um, and we connect all of our businesses in our network um, to each other so that you can be creative, innovative, have the best information possible to grow and, and, and build a successful company. Um, so that's part of what we do. And then we also know that we don't do everything. So we have relationships, again, with chambers of commerce in, in throughout the entire state, um, small business uh, development centers that can provide assistance. And so uh, we're, we're really here to be a, a partner and help connect businesses um, to the right resources. Well, you've talked a little bit about, you guys had to pivot a little bit. You talk about bringing people together. Through this pandemic, how has Local First pivoted and what kind of successes have you guys seen? So the first two months of the pandemic, I think everybody could agree, were some of the most challenging times that pretty much everybody was facing. You know, a lot of uncertainty, a lot of anxiety, a lot of unknowns. 
Um, and that was happening um, across the spectrum in the small business community. Um, with closures happening, with um, fear of you know spreading uh, the virus, all of these things, um, businesses didn't know if they were going to make it. Um, some businesses just closed right off the bat. They 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 knew they couldn't make it through. Um, and we've heard a lot of, about a lot of businesses that have closed. Um, but the bright side is that Local First activated to um, raise funds for small businesses that we knew couldn't wait for additional assistance. So we were able to raise. Uh, over $2 million in grants that we gave out to businesses throughout Arizona. And through that process, we also uh, weighed and uh, weighed out and, and measured the different things that were happening with consumers. Um, and one of the biggest things that happened was in April, in Arizona and in the United States collectively, uh, consumers and families were shopping online more than ever before. And so our team sat down and we said, well, if we look into the future, <laughs> there are some small businesses uh, that are set up really well online, but there's a lot that are not. Uh, there's a lot of crafters. There's a lot of artists. There's a lot of uh, small boutiques. They rely on like, festivals. They rely on festivals. Oh they rely gosh, on yeah. foot traffic. Yeah. They rely on people in being in person. Um, and while you can never replace that, uh, we wanted to work on a competitive advantage that small businesses could have. So we worked uh, with uh, local firm Ideas Collide, great partners of Local First, uh, to build the Shop Arizona Marketplace, um, which launched in November. And it's a one-stop shop. It's a one-of-a-kind marketplace where you go on and you can purchase items from a wide variety of local businesses that are certified small businesses in Arizona. So maybe you don't feel safe about getting out yet. Um, maybe you want to do your holiday shopping and don't want to spend all your money on uh, at big boxes mm -hmm. online. Uh, you want to get a unique gift. Um, this is going to be a place to do that. You can get everything from skateboards to t-shirts to uh, movie theater, gift passes, um, you name it, and you'll know that you're supporting a small business at the same time. So you've talked about some great small businesses and you talked about this brand new website for local businesses and you can shop local. but it sounds like you're pretty plugged into the local community of businesses and restaurants. Sure. I would love to learn some more and I'd love to give everybody else some. So I'm going to give you maybe a city and then you give me your favorite restaurant or business. Okay. And then I might pick like a food type, like okay. tacos or Mexican food or whatever. And then I want to hear from. So okay. no pressure. <laughs> local first. Encyclopedia of businesses. Here we go. Downtown Phoenix. Downtown Phoenix. Um my my favorite business to visit is Fair Trade Cafe. Okay. Um, Stephanie Vasquez, longtime a member of the community, and it's just one of those places where you walk in and uh, you almost just you just feel at, at home. You feel at place. You always run into somebody. Mm -hmm. um, really okay. great environment. Yeah. West Phoenix. West Valley. Um, I'll probably go downtown Glendale. Okay. And the first place that I was ever um, put in a position to order a meal in Spanish when I was a kid in school was Bitsy Mama's. Okay. Downtown Glendale, still there, still thriving. Great. Um, love that place. Okay. Yeah. Tucson. Tucson, um, arguably, and in my opinion, the best pizza in Arizona. Ooh. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, it is Riley Craft Pizza. Okay. Um, built in an adaptive reuse building. It's an old mortuary mm -hmm. that they transformed into a, a pizza shop. Um, I can't beat it. Tombstone, Arizona. Tombstone, Arizona. You're going to have to go with Tombstone Brewery, oh. which is actually opening up a location in the old Helio Basin Brewery on uh, Thomas and no 40th way. Street. Yep. Okay. So again, the state coming together. There we go. Um, favorite taco spot in town? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, tacos are the talk of the town. Um, no pressure on this taco one. I don't know that I could pick less than 10 taco places. Okay, give so me two. I'll give a shout out to Tacos Chiwas. Oh, legendary. Um, legendary. Um, I'll give a shout out to Tacos Mascadores as well. Never yeah. been there. Yeah. Which one is they this? Have multiple locations. Oh, so, oh well, yeah. okay. So we have opportunity yeah. there. Yeah. Tacos Mascadores. Yeah. I shall meet you soon. Okay. <laughs> I'll be excited about that. Uh, and most importantly, talk about downtown Phoenix. Okay. We look at a city, you go, you go to Denver, San Diego, New York, Chicago. These great American cities have great downtowns. Prior to this pandemic, downtown has been on fire. Now, stop me if I'm wrong here. I said prior to this pandemic. Yeah. Downtown is still on fire. There's cranes everywhere. Yeah, there's a lot of development happening. Um, so, I mean, growing up here, downtown was not a place you went to, really. Um, if 
you know, you were trying to go out, right? <laughs> um, it's transformed a lot, I would say every eight to 10 years over the last 30 to 40 years, uh, dramatically. Um, we're seeing that trend continue. Um, more spaces being built. Um, it's becoming incredibly dense. But I think an important piece of that conversation is also um, who are um, the places being built for? And can we uh, move in a forward direction downtown that also includes um, livability for the people that have been there for a very long time? And so uh, making sure we uh, uh, keep hold of historic buildings and don't just you know, tear them down and build new things um, and, and that kind of stuff. So there's a, there's a need for a great mix of old and new and, and, um, and investing in that type of, of growth downtown. Yeah. Well, learning more about being local is a staple of us at State 48 and encouraging everyone to get out and, and see their state at a, during a pandemic, taking a road trip up to Flagstaff, going down to Tombstone, uh, maybe going to like Havasu City, whatever it is, it's, it's now's the time to see our beautiful state because the weather's perfect too. But learning more about being local is very powerful. It's very powerful for all of us here at State 48 and activating the community is our goal here on the foundation. So we look forward to working closely with Local First Arizona. We can't say thank you enough for being a part of this with us, for being a collaboration partner and uh, hopefully a foundation partner for years to come. Absolutely. Love awesome. it. Thomas Barr. Thank Thanks, you so much. Yep.